Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, welcome to the Rambling Movie Minute. Maybe a little less rambly this week. Uh, with your little corner on the internet by the water cooler. Something like that. It's a TARDIS. You know, whenever I say this, I, I imagine this TARDIS water cooler just kind of floating through space. Because the internet is like like cyberspace to me still. Like in Hackers, right? And somebody who's going to probably agree with me on that uh, is one Mad Mike at Mad Mike 4883 uh, joining us from New York. We got, the, we got the Mike and Mike New York Pittsburgh connection going on right now. Um, and, 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 but you wouldn't know which is which cause you're wearing Penn's gear tonight. I am wearing Penn's gear tonight and I'm actually in a different place than I normally am. <laughs> yes. Not New York city proper, but you're, you're up there. You're upstate now, yes. right? I am actually, um, if you watch how I met your mother last night, I am where two characters settled after the show. Oh, nice. I, I'm in Poughkeepsie. Wait, no spoilers, no spoilers, no spoilers. I I'm haven't watched it yet. I want that. Not saying who it is. Not saying who it is. Not saying Just who saying it is. saying that two characters ended up settling down in Poughkeepsie, which I thought was very odd. Nice. Is that really that odd? You'd be surprised how often Poughkeepsie comes up. I think it's just because people like saying the name. Heck, and I can't. I'm, of course, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. I do not watch movies. I'm taking a stand <laughs> against this show, Mike. No movies I, for me. I haven't got out to anything, but I've been playing video games, so I'm prepared for another little podcast that we do here live at uh, SorgatronMedia.com every Tuesday night starting at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, so there's that. Uh, well, so, luckily for you, Sorg, I've seen four movies since the last time I was on. There you go. There you four go. new movies. I've watched other movies, but those movies I've seen dozens of times before, so... I did say, do we want to, we, we talked a little bit off air. I did see movie 43. I kind of mentioned it in passing last week, but I know you had an opinion of it. I love movie 43. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I feel like, I feel like if you watch the 40 in movie 43 is just a bunch of mini stories it, with a lot of people that you're asking, why the hell, how did they get these people in this movie? Um, so, but well, the way the I, way I called uh, it, like, <laughs> <laughs> for Sims, for Simpsons fans, they'll get this reference. I called movie 43 22 short films about Hollywood. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah. Because they're all completely random, but like none of them are actually portraying the people that they are in real life. Mm -hmm. But it's it's so odd. like it wasn't what it was a random red box rental that my girlfriend and I decided to pick up. Because I had seen commercials for it before. I thought it looked funny via the previews. And we were just dying the whole time. Like, just laughing. And especially the um, the speed dating scene with Batman and Robin. I mean, that that to me is better than almost any other movie DC has done. <laughs> it is it is so random if, if i i think i think if you see like the first like segment and and if you didn't laugh at that you're in trouble yes absolutely that that sets the tone i think for the rest of the night yes absolutely so like and, and the first segment's one of hugh jackman right yeah yeah uh, see we we lost it at that like it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. And then we were like, okay, that's what kind of movie we're in for. All right. As long as we know. <laughs> awesome. So, but we do have some other things. I know you have addressed the box office. What's going on out there in the theater world? Okay. Well, um, 300, or as certain people would call it, 1800 abs, Rise of an Empire. Uh, they could not hold on to the top spot this week as they were dethroned by Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Oh, wow. Yes. And um, at number three, we had Need for Speed with, um, oh, what's his name? The, um, the guy from Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad. At four, we had Taken on a Plane, also called Nonstop. And five was Tyler Perry's Yet Another Movie. <laughs> It's called The Single Moms Club. I've never seen an ad for it. I'm just calling it Tyler Perry's Yet Another Movie. 
At number six, we had the Lego movie still going strong. Still going strong. Um, at number seven was Son of God. At number eight was the Grand Budapest Hotel, which I think opened in limited release. I don't think that was open nationally yet. Um, at number nine was Frozen. Still, still out still there. Home. Holy hell. Still. And Frozen is coming out on DVD to, yeah. to, today. It came out on DVD today, and it's still in the top ten. Wow. I should I say there's it's not really released. much going on. Like that's all bargain theaters at this point, right? Uh no, I think they released the um the whatchamacallit, the sing along version. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. So that so that's <laughs> you know it's still in over it's still in over fourteen hundred screens. Wow. Yeah. And at number ten was Monuments Men. And I know we usually don't go past number ten, but I'm throwing this in here because it's amazing that this even exists. At number eleven Veronica Mars. Veronica Mars the movie was the number 11th uh, movie this weekend. Nice. Nice. All right. So you have a few stories here. Uh, let's get into I'm, I'm going to go in order that you gave them to me here. Okay. Um, so very a lot, a lot of geekery going on here. Of course, it's kind of our especially when when the, when the mics here get together, uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of double the geekness here uh so you you introduced one uh about uh arrow is about to introduce introduce uh supporting characters from the flash uh I, I, in the recent episodes we we got our first look at the flash uh for the upcoming uh tv show that's going to be on cw um mm -hmm. so what what's going on mike who's coming over please tell me it's trickster no well it looks like it's just going to be um the way uh, the producer called it. It's like um, previewing Boba Fett in the Star Wars Holiday Special. <laughs> okay. And uh, apparently the two characters are going to be uh, a bioengineering expert from Star Labs named Caitlin Snow. Okay. And, and a mechanical engineering genius known as Cisco Ramon. And I believe, oh, uh, in the comics they're known as Vibe and Killer Frost. Okay, so don't that should be interesting. Ones. Don't know those. I'm very limited on my uh, Flash knowledge, unfortunately. Well, I know who Vibe is uh, mm -hmm. because Vibe had a animated short during DC Nation on Cartoon Network, and the way they portrayed Vibe is uh, he was kind of like the old school Power Man, like he had an afro and everything, and he was very hip to the groove, so to speak. And Killer Frost is actually in Injustice. Oh, okay. Yeah, Killer Frost is... Um, I don't know whose villain she technically is. I'm assuming she's Flash's if they're bringing her up in the Flash. But I don't know much about her beyond... She's kind of like a female Mr. Freeze. And maybe she's a takeoff of... Because they have, uh, 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 you know, Captain... Captain freeze or, or captain captain cold, captain cold uh because I, I i did watch the flashpoint stuff where he becomes a, a hero uh, yes yeah, so sort of on on that um so i don't know it, but i i love that this they're having this cross-pollination and characters we haven't seen on a screen before i think in a well, lot of cases it's funny because um they're going to be debuting in episode 19 of arrow and originally in episode 20 the flash was going to come back mm-hmm but those plans have changed since then. So interesting. it's going to be interesting to see how they kind of cross pollinate. Awesome. Hey, we're getting, uh, uh, I know you'll be along these lines uh, because of the other show that we do, the wrestling mayhem show uh, together. Uh, Alex uh, cars is in there who, who helps us a lot here around with some graphics at Circuitron media. Uh, he says uh, <laughs> he's very excited about Oculus. That is apparently coming from uh, WWE films. I think I saw uh, one of the first previews, but it's going to have Amy Pond, uh, the oh, character yeah. plays Amy Pond, who's also in Galaxy, uh, guardians of the galaxy, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, but he says, da, 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 da. he said, like, how can you go wrong? Though when I saw the first teaser uh, a trailer, I expected it to either be Leprechaun Reboot or the See No Evil 2, which are both coming from WWE Films. This Leprechaun Reboot has been coming for years. Well, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm excited for See No Evil 2. Yeah, I enjoyed the first one. It was, it was a good slasher, Saw era, you know, and, uh, horror and film. I, I went to um, the... When they had at New York Con, they had a WWE Films panel. Mm -hmm. So I got to 
hear Kane and Hornswoggle talk about their horror movies. And the the um the twins that directed See No Evil Two, it sounds like they're into some really hardcore violent stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm very very excited. Like they showed one clip of it, it, it's very much like the intro of a movie, and it takes place in I want to say it's like some sort of med- medical facility, like an um, asylum or something like that, because they're about to do an autopsy on Jacob Goodnight. And then he twitches his hand, and that's where the the teaser cut off. Hmm. So I'm super it's excited. It's very for it. interesting because because WWE, I mean, we, they're notoriously a public company. We do PG TV and all this stuff, and now there's these new toys, and it's very kid centric. I, I think for the most part. Uh, plus, they have the play with WWE Network. We've talked about on, on many of these shows here uh, on the network here, um, and 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 but the movies. And they're, I mean, they're pretty much, I guess, just doing a producer role as, as far mm-hmm. as things go. Uh, yeah. But they've really gone dark with a lot of these movies. I watched Dead Man Down. That's a very dark movie. Um, they have that one. I forget. I forget what the name of it was with Brodus Clay in it. Um, that was, you know, one of those kind of wrong turn slasher film kind of things. Um, they're not afraid to go the horror genre with, I mean, especially they threw like a, a character that, you know, was pretty much dancing on their on their television every week, and they throw him <laughs> in a horror movie. It just seemed like a really weird play for them. Um, well, but, I, but... I think it kind of makes more sense though, because especially since most of these movies are essentially direct to DVD. Yeah. With direct to DVD, you're gonna get more people finding horror movies than you are like comedies like The Chaperone. Yeah, pretty much the horror movies dead as far as like in theater goes in the long run. Yeah. So you got to bring it back to kids' movies, though. Um, you got one here. Incredible 2 and Cars 3 are coming along. I'm not mad yes. about this. I am i don't care about Cars 3. I didn't see Cars 1. But Incredibles 2, I'm super excited for. And do you want to know why, Sorg? Hmm. I have an idea. I have an idea. And Disney, if you're listening, feel free to take this and give me monetary credit for it. Disney has been promoting their Avengers Assemble cartoon. And they've even had it cross-pollinate with Phineas and Ferb. Why not have it cross-pollinate with The Incredibles? That would be great. Like, could you imagine if you have Mr. Incredible and the Hulk teaming up? Like, and you don't even have to get the actors from the movie. You can just have it literally be the characters from the cartoon. Have it cross-pollinate into the Disney world so you don't have to worry about, like, getting Tony like gang downy or chris evans or anything like that and you can have frozone talk to nick fury which i would that would just make me giggle that'd be that'd be awesome that'd be awesome yeah and even like i think some people weren't really too crazy about cars too uh we talked on this program about uh planes being such a craptastic you know experiment um and you know they're coming out with another planes, right? I know. They're, I know. I've already seen ads for it, and it was just like, really? They're doing this? Really? Like, they're doing this? Planes, really? Already? Planes. Hashtag America. Yeah, because it's the rescue <laughs> planes, right? Yeah, it's the rescue planes, and that's all it looked like to me. It just looked like, uh, okay, so planes sucked, but if we sell it with an American twist, everyone will love it's it. It's like the um, what's the show? I I see it like when I'm up way too early on Saturday, I'm flipping through the like rescue people that are like the fireman and the policeman. And they're like helping save people from hurricanes and stuff. Um, like it, it's like that, like let's, you know, let's, uh, let's take the human element out. Of yeah. It. Well, let's take the human elephant out of that show and, and, and let's, um, show the kids, you know, the real heroes, you know, the, 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 I don't know. I, I, either way, I, it's it's for the kids. I don't think this is going to have as great co- crossover appeal as Pixar movies do. I, I think that's very obvious. Um, but Cars 3, I, I'm not mad at Pixar sequels. <laughs> like, go for it. I, I know it's Disney really getting behind them and say, hey, milk this cash cow, please. So, so new kids will be introduced to these things so they will buy the toys and hug the characters at Disney World. Um, mm-hmm. I just don't see why they haven't announced Incredibles 2 sooner. 
Because especially yes. with all the superhero stuff, like that's true, really hitting big. Well, you like, think... Incredibles came out before any of that stuff really even hit. When are these coming out? Do they give they they give um when or no. do? They, they no, haven't they, yet. They, well, you got to think the cycle on those movies is long. Oh, yeah. Well, Finding Dory isn't supposed to come out until 2016. Yeah, exactly. So I'm imagining so, these are going to be like 2017, 2018 releases. Yeah. If they're announcing them now. So. I wouldn't be surprised. But I, I mean, I, I get excited for new properties for them. I, mean, I say when we see the next Brave and, and, and everything. It's like, oh, cool. You know, more. You know, that's good. I know it's Pixar. I know they're going to do a good job. You know, with monsters. I just want to see through. Pixar animate the Avengers. I I want to see that so badly. Like love why they that. haven't done I would something love like to that. See that happen. Or just, I mean, I don't think they're going to do the Avengers at least anytime soon. Not this decade. Uh, but I, I love them to. I mean, there's been rumors about. Didn't they say Ant Man was supposed to be animated at first? Um, and 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 there's some tests out there. Of course, they've they've, they've gone with a live action for it. Um, but I would love them to just pick a character and say. This is going to be ours. Like, I could have imagined them doing it with Guardians of the Galaxy if they didn't do a movie. Um, I can see them doing it with Doctor Strange. What if, and I know it's probably tied up with Fox, but what if they decide, let's do a Deadpool movie? No, and actually, Pixar would probably not do that. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Never mind, a little too. Oh, uh, Pixar are doing, de- although that would be interesting. Wouldn't it? I, oh, I would like it. I would very much like it. I think that'd be really funny. But... There's way too much violence in a Deadpool movie. Um, Alex is excited for Ant Man. Uh, Killer Krauss is in there in the chat room, and he's saying he's a uh, uh, he would love another Incredibles movie, so he's down with it. Uh, Chachi says because the Incredibles is already its own universe, so yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, no, but the no whole idea. That, what, what's that? No, I was gonna say no one's proven that overarching Pixar theory. So that's true too. Why, that why is not? True. Why not have? Incredibles and the Avengers be in the same universe. When are they going to just put like the Avengers and Disney Infinity? Just, just oh, why not? Just you know what? You, just make a New Kingdom Hearts game and have like Iron Man Infinity, hook up with. You're going to do true Disney blade. Infinity. We're going to drop our Marvel characters. We're going to drop our our Star Wars characters. Why the heck not? We're already we're already pushed over the the Pixar characters, but they've kind of been joined for a while. Why not? I don't see why they're not doing that because that would essentially just be printing money. Yeah, yeah. I want to have <laughs> Spider Man interacting with Mickey Mouse. I guess. Yeah. I guess there's the violence aspect of it, but they have kidified this. Why not put the uh, superhero squad versions in there? Oh my God! Right? I would love they own them. It makes squad, sense. Yeah. It makes sense. Okay, we're getting away from movies. We're getting away from movies, but uh, uh, a lot more geekery going on. Uh, again, we're sticking with the superheroes. Fantastic Four not happening, or at least oh. what? It's it's either happening or not happening. People don't know. <laughs> People <laughs> unfamiliar with the matter are not sure what's going on. And in response, well, when asked, said, meh? <laughs> well, because they, they need to start shooting a Fantastic Four movie very, very soon. Otherwise, they lose the license. Oh, I hope they do the crappy 10-minute one or something like they did back in like the 90s. Oh, I, no, I want them to lose the license. I want them to. I want Fox to lose the license. Please. I want the Fantastic Four to be back with Marvel, and I want, like, I don't know who I would cast as Reed Richards, but I want a Tony Stark and Reed Richards scene together. <laughs> I don't care at this point anybody other than what they've been doing. Um, I mean, they've already dropped Daredevil. That's going back and becoming a Netflix series, uh, along with a couple other ones, um, including I. She's uh, Power Man. Okay. What was it? Luke, yeah, Luke, Luke Cage. Cage thank man. you. I, I'm like Nick Cage. No, that's not right. Um, yeah, the Power <laughs> Man and the uh, Daredevil and uh, 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 the uh, geez, Electra. Electra. Uh, what, the the one chick from from like the Luke Cage stuff is going to be in it too, like one of the Defenders or something. Yeah, so, I, I mean, and I they're like remember. really yeah. obscure. Jessica Jones, maybe. Jessica no. Jones. I think that is it. Yeah. Uh, really okay. obscure characters. Let's see what they do in this format with with netflix i'm I'm really looking forward to it did you uh, hear that terry cruz is the front runner for power man oh that'd be great that'd be great make it happen <laughs> book it make it happen haven't they started on those yet i thought they simply announced them and then no i think they've i think they've just because i mean they're going to be like 13 episode things they're not going to be like big movies so no. i think they'll be able to pound them out really quick because i know they're filming i'm pretty sure all of them in new york good Good. So Keep it authentic, especially with that Hell's Kitchen, because I can't imagine Hell's Kitchen is very mimicable. 
Not really. No. I mean, I, granted, I haven't been to big cities like Chicago or something like that, but I I would imagine Hell's Kitchen's pretty tough to kind of copy mm-hmm. just because of the landscaping you have there. Awesome. So one more Marvel. <laughs> well, it's a Marvel and it's a DC story. That's true, too. Um, we're going to be, we're at least as of right now, we're going to be getting Marvel versus DC directly in the theaters. Nice. With Captain America 3 opening the same day as Batman vs. Superman. We've been talking about this. I, I, like, I know I've been talking this with, with Missy, and, and, and we're, we're pretty much expecting to do a double, uh, a, a double feature day for that. I think that's going to absolutely destroy box office records for like two movies just doing ridiculous on one day. They have to really kick ass with uh captain america 3 though i i think they'll i think they'll absolutely kick ass with captain america 3 i think they absolutely will because you don't know what you're getting with batman versus superman that's true like like they've they've announced batman wonder woman lex luther like they're just dc's just trying to cram everything in there and (laughs) all of these are going to be new portrayals of the character and Captain America is like, hey, I'm still here. Hi, how you doing? And and at this point, you got to also think this is going to be an established character. As long as they haven't flubbed Avengers 2 or something, there's going to be an established character that has been featured in no less than four movies by the time this yep. Captain America 3 comes out versus a second movie in a series with a completely, what the heck is Ben Affleck going to be like as Batman? So I think it's, you're right, it's going to be very, something very, very, holy crap, established and already broken box office and been introduced to an audience to a, a kind of a new new ish entity in the long run i know it's going to be several years away but it, it, and we'll be familiarized i know in ads and stuff but but it, it is it is like franchise versus franchise and right now that marvel franchise is a lot stronger i think than dc oh hell yeah so yeah definitely movie wise yeah movie wise animation wise i'd say they're about equal footing depends on what I'd you're talking DC. about because because well, uh, just animation as a whole I, B, dc probably has yeah yeah a slightly bigger advantage because their animated movies have been really good but their shows they keep canceling them left and right yeah so but i honestly i as much as i would love to see both of these come out in the same day i don't think it's gonna happen you think there, you think I, somebody's I, you think somebody's gonna back down? You think somebody's gonna flinch in this in this uh, in this uh, 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 issue? I think absolutely, and I think that's gonna be DC. <laughs> I, I I truly honestly think that because DC had already moved Batman vs Superman like up a whole year, like back a whole year. So I think they wouldn't mind, you know. Because they want, they want to be that big box office, and they know going against Captain America, it's at the at the worst going to split the audience. Mm-hmm. Definitely, but certainly, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. Even if they're like released within a week of each other, it'll awesome. be interesting to see. So, what have you been watching, Mike? Uh, well, let's see. I watched Mr. Peabody and Sherman, which was fantastic. I liked it a lot. Um, very, very true to the cartoon. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of historical references, a lot of historical puns, and I love puns. So it was it was just a good family flick. Like, and but, but there are enough jokes in there for the adults to get to. Mm-hmm. But it was a good ride, and the. And the graphic, like we saw it in 3D, the animation was amazing. Now, uh, did you did you hear uh, Belango's take on the movie last week? Uh, no, I wasn't. I so, wasn't able. To. So he he kind of saw it as, as kind of a Dreamers movie that kind of fell flat in comparison to like a how to how to train your dragon or something like that. And we had a pretty extensive discussion actually on. Um, um, you know why you get such a varying quality of of DreamWorks films versus what we get over on you know the Pixar side that we've been talking about, like you know where we really it feels like Pixar can't do wrong at this point. Um, did you feel like as as a DreamWorks movie? Uh, to me, sometimes when I come across DreamWorks movies like this, I don't think of it as a DreamWorks movie. I think of it as it's another animated movie I want to see. I'm like oh, it's DreamWorks, so okay, they're they're kind of hit and miss, but you know they've always been, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, anything after Shrek 
with DreamWorks has been very hit and miss. Yes. Like, like you have um, Kung Fu Panda, which was a hit, but then you have something like Shark Tale, which yeah. is just, they're just trying to cash out on Finding Nemo. Robots was rough. Um, didn't they have a, there was Bugs Life, and then there was a, a Ants. Ants, you know? Yeah. And they, they felt very Me Too in the long run. Um, yeah. There's actually, I forget what I read. I, I think it might have been even in the Steve Jobs book where they talked about why there was an Ants versus Bug Life that happened at the same time in the theater. That there was like a little bit of, oh, you're doing a bug movie. Maybe we'll do a bug movie kind of stuff. Because I think somebody from Pixar might have left and done DreamWorks. I can't remember all the history there, but it's very interesting. So Pete Body and Sherman, um, I, I mean, I've been hearing some other opinions on the movie over the last week on some other podcasts, uh, specifically Core Killers, I, I, a great show that I watch every week. Um, and uh, they said there was a little the one guy would seem to be a little unnerved by the the dog is the father aspect well i mean but that was that was always the case Mm -hmm. in the cartoon too so i mean i knew that going in Mm -hmm. and it actually it served a better not not prequel but like a backstory as to why peabody is sherman's father and it was actually kind of sweet it was kind it was kind of sweet i'm not i (laughs) <laughs> I'm not Maya Stone, you know. I, I liked I liked it a lot. Awesome, awesome. All right, anything else you want to talk about, sir? Uh, well, nonstop was very fun. Uh, Liam Neeson taken on a plane, basically, just as we uh, all expected, as we want to see. We want to see Liam Neeson. Did he say at any point, "Get off my plane"? Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I don't. I don't think he did because technically it wasn't his plane. That's true. So, uh, but he kicked a lot of ass in the movie, and there was only one part that I thought was entirely unnecessary toward the end. It involved a little child. There was only one little child on this whole plane, which, um, bullshit. But, but other than that, it was a it was a really good movie. Um. Very, very fun popcorn flick. As long as it's not like the little child scene from Walking Dead this week. Anyways, uh, some other cha- uh, chat room stuff says it's bad enough that they're considering Leia a Disney princess. Well, she is. Why not? She is. Not? She's a princess. She's legitimately Besides, a princess. Besides, Star Tours has been at Hollywood Studios for years, years upon years now that they've had a Star Wars ride at Disney before they even bought the rights to Star Wars. Um, and, and also, uh, Alex thinks that the uh, Peabody and Sherman uh, 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 discussion is too divisive for the show between you and Malengo. <laughs> I don't know. That's why he's not that's, here that's this week. Honestly, why I didn't? That's why honestly why I didn't show up. That's this why he's not week. here I this knew, week. I knew. I knew he had strong opinions, and I was like, all right, you know what? I'll just let him go. Separate. Keep them separated, so they can get their opinion out there and let you decide out there in in movie land. Yeah. Um, with that, <laughs> um, what is wrong with Leia being a Disney princess? I, I'm okay with it. In the world of conglomerates, it. it's, it's, mean, it's not it's the not worst like thing to happen. They've animated her into <laughs> like the background or anything. It's you know, like I would be mad about the, about get... about Disney taking over Marvel and Star Wars like 15 years ago when that was an issue when they were putting out crap. Now yeah. that like the Pixar people are in charge, I'm cool with it. And, I'm and plus, cool with it. Disney took over Marvel, and they've done pretty okay with it so far. Yeah, I'm not exactly. too concerned about Star Wars either. Um, excellent. So coming up in the theaters this weekend, let's see if I can get that going here. Uh, by the way, Malengo, uh, he is sick. At least that's what he told me. Again, he could be avoiding Mad Mike. I'm not sure. He was sick of my opinions. He was sick of your opinions on DreamWorks films, obviously. (laughs) Obviously. Uh, But opening this weekend, is this right? Muppets Most Wanted is coming out? That's this weekend? According to this. Oh. Muppets Most Wanted Divergent is coming out. Uh, Nymphomaniac Volume 1. Oh, that's a limited release. Um, Oh, now we're getting into the weird ones. So those are the two big ones, I think. Um... I believe I'm going to see Divergent this weekend. You know, I, I finally saw the trailer in the past week, and I, I so it's feeling very Hunger Gamesy to me. 
as far it's as it's an the interesting book, concept from what i've heard yeah yeah i i know i know uh my sister-in-law is apparently a fan of the books and has been trying to get a couple of them uh i you know every time a movie like this comes out i feel like i've missed the boat on something you know um i like 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 I don't know. Like, like I've never heard of Divergent. Never heard of it as a book. Never heard anybody talking about it. Maybe I'm not following enough book club uh, podcasts. Um, you really aren't, because I've heard about Divergent for years. Game of I Thrones know. didn't know, you know, um, and now I'm completely into it. Hunger Games, you know, maybe a little bit. You know, probably from when they announced the movie. Um, I, I, Harry Potter, mm, you know, there was no <laughs> Harry Potter when when I was in school, you know, so. Mm. We had a really bad library, apparently, growing up in my town. <laughs> they didn't really encourage those kinds of things. I, I think I had to read The Scarlet Letter twice. Ooh. Yeah. That's that's not a fun book to read. That's once. one of the unfortunate things from moving from one school to the other. Sometimes they overlap. It's like, ah, oh, no, I did this already. Um, so there's that. Mad Mike, thank you for joining us. Thank you for filling in and, and scaring off Malengo. Uh, you guys can join us. Of course, this show's over at SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, you can go check it out and other fine podcasts. Also, look us up on iTube. iTube? YouTube. ITube. Wow. <laughs> iTunes. <laughs> First show of the night, guys. Um, YouTube's, YouTube's, iTunes, um, and all that kind of stuff. You can join us here live at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time at SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, big shout out to a new uh, uh, new network sponsor, actually, Slice on Broadway. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com. And uh, check out the site Sword. to see how you can help them out in a little thing going on here in Pittsburgh. What's up, Mike? Can I say something about Slice on Broadway? Yes, you as a New Yorker have an opinion on pizza. I, and this is Pittsburgh pizza. I do. Every time I've been to Pittsburgh, I've gone to a new pizza place. Some of which have been okay. One of which was very horrible. The slice on Broadway is damn good pizza. Like, I was, I was physically impressed with Slice on Broadway. And I didn't think I would be, but I, try, I, I looked at the pizza. I'm like, okay, it looks fine. And then I taste it. Very good. I, I, I highly approve, and I am very picky about pizza. There you go. Right there is feeding our in-studio guests. Thanks a lot, Slice on Broadway, for that. If you're in Pittsburgh in the South Hills, go check them out. And I think new locations opening soon across Pittsburgh, so check them out there. Uh, thanks, Mad Mike. We'll see you guys next week. So uh, go, uh, go watch some movies. <laughs>